It's possible to determine the reaction order and therefore the rate law using experimental concentration versus initial rate data. So we'll look at the reaction of nitrogen monoxide with hydrogen gas. And we'll try to determine the rate law for this reaction. And to do that, we need to find the values of K, M, and N. And one of the ways that you can do this is by designing experiments where you isolate the effect of changing a reaction concentration on the rate. So look now at experiments one and two. In these experiments, the initial concentrations of hydrogen gas have been kept the same. Experiment one had an initial concentration of hydrogen of 0.15 molar, and so did experiment number two. The only reactant concentration that's changed has been the nitrogen monoxide. And that means the only thing changing the rate of reaction is going to be the change in nitrogen monoxide. So by comparing reactions one and two, we can isolate the effect of nitrogen monoxide, which means we can find the value of M. We set up ratios with generalized rate laws that we would determine from experiment one and experiment two. And we know that for both of these rate laws, the K value is going to be exactly the same. It's a constant value, it doesn't change. So its effect cancels out. We know that the concentration of hydrogen gas is 0.15 in both of these experiments. And raising 0.15 to the nth power is going to be the same in both reaction one and reaction two, so it cancels out. And this means we can simplify our expression a little bit. And now we can start plugging numbers in from our table. And then we can simplify this expression a little bit. And hopefully you remember when working with exponents and divisions, you can simplify this even further. In this case, our numbers work out pretty nicely. It looks like m is going to be 2. 2 to the power of 2 gets you 4, which is extremely close to 4.02. But sometimes you'll find that your numbers don't work out quite so cleanly and the answer is not quite as intuitive. And if that happens, you can use logarithms and take the log of both sides. And if you do that and you remember how logarithms work, you can simplify this a little bit further. So you can find that the value for m is 2. And then you can do effectively the same thing to find n. You look for two experimental trials where the only thing that changes is the concentration of hydrogen. So in this case, it would be experiment 3 and experiment 1. K is a constant in both cases, so it cancels. The concentration of nitrogen monoxide in experiment 3 and in experiment 1 are both 0.15 molar, so they cancel. and we can find that the value of n is 1. Once we know our reaction orders, we can use any one of our trials to find the value of k. It doesn't make a difference, but we'll use experiment number 1. When we've done our calculation, we can find that the value of k is about 250 molar to the minus 2 seconds to the minus 1. 
And at this point, it's worth noting that the units for K are going to depend on the overall order of the reaction. So a first order reaction or a second order or a third order reaction will all have different units for their K value. But now that we have K, we can write a completed rate law. And typically, if the order of reaction with respect to one of the reactants is 1, like in this case our n value is 1, you omit it when you're writing the rate law and the 1 is just implied. So I just mentioned how the units for the rate constant are going to change depending on the overall order of a reaction. The overall order for the entire reaction is the sum of both of the individual orders. So in this case, our reaction orders are 2 and 1, so the overall order for the reaction is 3. So the reaction of nitrogen monoxide with hydrogen gas is a third order reaction. And something that's worth noting is the coefficients in the reaction are not the same as the orders of reaction. Sometimes they'll match and sometimes they won't. And at this point, you don't have the ability to decide when stoichiometric coefficients and reaction orders will be the same. So at this point, you'll always have to find the reaction orders experimentally.